ඔෆිස් එකේ දී විතරක් නෙවෙයි මම දැන් ගෙදරදිත් IDD කෝස් ගන්නේ SLT ෆෝන් එකේ ඔබේ නිවසේ SLT දුරකථනය දැන් IDD පහසුකම සහිතයි making headlines on first at 9 soaring heat despite heavy rainfall med department extend its heat advisory for a third day present warm weather situation so we can expect even tomorrow foiled racket malaysian police unravel a human smuggling racket with 131 sri lankans caught in an oil tanker staunch reassurance JVP insists that the 20th amendment to the constitution will not infringe the 13th more than uh, two or three provincial councils will try to say it's uh, their separate state it can be stopped using 13th amendment powers postponed may day united national party celebrates may day in colombo some big hitters however were missing belly cost talk Iranian president warns that the US will face historic regret if President Trump scraps the nuclear agreement. A very good evening and welcome to First at 9. I'm Katharina Chang. I want your top story tonight. The Department of Meteorology issued another heat advisory today for the northern, eastern, north, central and Uwa provinces. This is the third straight day that the Met Department warned of excessive heat in these provinces. Referring to the heat index, the advisory states that heat levels in some parts of the Matale district may reach the level of caution. Currently, pre-monsoon activities are prevailing in Sri Lanka as the weather system is seen running from Southeast Arabian Sea to Southwest Bay of Bengal, with it also passing through southern parts of Sri Lanka. As a result, light to moderate rain with a few spells of showers occurred in many parts of the island. The town of Gelioya was inundated owing to rains experienced in Kandy last night. Area residents charged that illegal construction in the town blocking drainage systems caused the flooding. One person was killed in an earth slip in the area of Navalapitiya due to heavy rains last night. A mound of earth fell atop a house in which a family was residing at the time. The deceased is a 20-year-old youth who succumbed upon admission to the Navalapitiya hospital. Police are conducting further investigations into the incident. Meanwhile, tourist police moved to caution tourists visiting Ravana Falls owing to the heavy deluge in Bandaravela. Meanwhile, Director General of the Department of Meteorology, Sarath Premala, said rainy weather conditions will be experienced across the island over the next 24 hours. Present rain condition uh, will be continued even uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, so we can expect afternoon thunder showers after 2 p.m. So we can expect thunder showers over most parts of the island. Uh, in addition, some places over the uh, Putlam district, uh, western province and southern province, we expect showers even during the morning. So we can expect uh, more than 100 mm rain, especially in the north central, central province, uh, Uwa province, Sabargamu, western and southern province. He added that although rains is said to prevail in some parts of the island, warm weather conditions can also be expected in several provinces across the island tomorrow as well. Present warm weather situation, so we can expect even tomorrow, especially in the northern, north central, eastern and some parts of the Matari district. Malaysian police have foiled a human smuggling racket with 131 immigrants believed to be Sri Lankans seeking illegal passage to Australia and New Zealand via sea. The Malaysian security forces say the illegal immigrants were attempting to get across using a modified oil tanker. The Malaysian coastline has long been used by human smugglers and is seen as a hub for illegal immigrants. With the Australian government along with other European countries tightening their immigration laws in the past few years, cases of unauthorized migration took a back seat. However, 131 Sri Lankans have been attempting to sail to Australia and New Zealand using a modified oil tanker via the southern coast of Johor state in Malaysia. 
According to Malaysian police, the tanker named Etra was halted last Tuesday carrying 131 illegal immigrants, including 98 men, 24 women and 9 children. Malaysian police also raided a fishing boat used to transport the immigrants to the vessel and detained three Indonesians and four Malaysians on board, while further five Malaysians were nabbed for suspected involvement in the smuggling syndicate. Malaysian police added that a total of 127 Sri Lankans will be charged for entering Malaysia illegally, while nine Malaysians, four Indonesians and four Sri Lankans will be investigated for human smuggling. They identified the bust as the largest human smuggling racket discovered since last year. Issuing a statement, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Sri Lanka said that investigations are underway and officials of the Sri Lanka High Commission in Malaysia are working closely with the relevant Malaysian authorities. First Set 9 meanwhile contacted the Sri Lankan High Commissioner for Malaysia, AJM Musamil, to get clarification on the latest incident of human smuggling involving Sri Lankans. Four of the people who are supposed to be aiding and abetting in this connection has been brought to Kuala Lumpur to the special investigation branch. So out of the 124, most of them are Sri Lankan passport holders. About 40 of them are sounds Sri Lankan Tamil names, but they are having various UNHCR identity cards. So we don't know where, how they got into these vessels. Tomorrow I'm sending a team from our office to put Jawabaru is getting on the spot investigation and I will be dealing with the special branch investigation officer in Kuala Lumpur tomorrow and I have asked for an appointment to go and see him. They have been all detained under the Malaysian Immigration Act so we will have to see how we can consult uh, legal opinion or retain lawyers and try to get them released. All these are processes that cannot be done overnight because at the moment Malaysia is going for four elections in the night. In the meantime, the government of New Zealand has extended their gratitude to Malaysian authorities for intercepting the tanker carrying illegal immigrants bound for New Zealand and Australia. Foreign media quoted New Zealand's Immigration Minister Ian Lees Galloway as saying that New Zealand was not involved in the operation, but the Malaysian success in disrupting this attempt sends a very clear signal to any people involved in people smuggling. The official May Day rally of the United National Party was worked off today at the Sugudadasa Indo Stadium. The much-anticipated event was held under the patronage of party leader Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. May Day celebrations were moved to the 7th instead of the traditional 1st of May due to the Vesak week falling on the same week. The official May Day rally of the United National Party was held under the theme New Energy for the Matured Relationship. The usual May Day parade was not organized this year by the party. Meanwhile, UNP's deputy leader, Minister Sajid Premadasa, presented decisions taken by the special committee on the party's conduct over the next 18 months. Members of the United National Party then expressed views at the rally. Our power in the local bodies dropped to 33%. The flower bud has surpassed us and that's the truth. So we need to find immediate solutions to this problem. I am fully confident that we can defeat the party of the flower bud by playing a very good game. There is now a competition between the three brothers, Basil, Gotabe and Chamal, to become the next president. There are problems and if something goes wrong within the party, we usually tend to blame the leader. That's something the country's media has been doing. We had to form a national government to build a country that was wasted. We should turn villages into thousands of UNP headquarters. I am the general secretary and I'm ready to do so. I give a pledge to you that we will secure victory for the party in 2020. We somehow continued with the economy. The commodity prices were increased. There was a lack of fertilizer. I know our supporters also had to take the blame for these things. So I would like to apologize over it. Mr. J.R. Jawardhana trained three leaders who can take the party forward after him. They all vanished and I was only a spare wheel in the agenda. Once I took over, no one else was there after me. I don't want a UNP government that would last only five years. I want one that would last for another 20 to 30 years. I can't do that. So that 
that's why I have started training new leaders for the party. We have taken the department of Samurdi under us and allocated 25 billion rupees for a one-year period. 13 billion rupees have been spent during the first three months, which is 53% of the total allocation. What had happened to the money? There is a Samurdi bank and no one cares about it. I asked the finance minister to take it under the purview of the Ministry of Finance. I would like to say that the Samurdi system will also come under the purview of the central bank. We will distribute everything from now on. We gave you fertilizer subsidies. When the farmers grasp this lesson, it also will be felt by the flowerbud party. I don't think our education minister would mind me saying this. Don't everyone here expect the school uniform to be distributed just as it was during President Premadas's tenure? <laughs> Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe said that Chairman of the UNP Minister Kabir Hashim didn't participate in the rally today as he was feeling unwell. Following inquiries by Adhidharana, it was confirmed that party's assistant leader Ravi Karnanayaka, State Minister Palita Range Bandara and Deputy Minister Ashoka Abe Singha were also unwell and did not participate in the May Day rally today. Meanwhile, it's reported that parliamentarian Chaminda Vijay Siri had to attend a funeral. Responding to Adhidharana's inquiry, State Minister Vasanta Sinanayaka and parliamentarian Hirunika Premachandra stated that they did not participate in the rally owing to personal reasons. Deputy Minister Ranjan Ramanayaka, State Minister Sujiva Sena Singha, Minister Daya Gamagi and Parliamentarians Mayanta Disanayaka and Edward Gunasekara are out of the country. Meanwhile, Treasurer of the party Dr. Harsha De Silva, Ministers Malik Samaravikrama, Sagala Ratnayaka as well as Parliamentarians Ranjit Alubihare and Chatura Sena Ratna also didn't participate in the UNP's official media rally. State Minister Dilip Vedarachi did not attend the rally due to his son's wedding today. Meanwhile, the United People's Freedom Alliance, Sri Lanka Purujana Perumuna and the Janata Vimukti Perumuna will hold their official May Day rallies tomorrow. We take a look at as, as to how these parties are gearing up for their rallies. The main May Day rally of the UPFA will be held tomorrow under the patronage of President Maitri Pala Sirisena at the Chenkaladi grounds in Batiklo at 3 p.m. It will be held under the theme Labour Strength for the National Unity. Everything is ready for tomorrow and there we will have numbers participating in the rally. Union members will be provided a special train service from Colombo to Chenkaladi. We will be able to make it a successful May Day rally. Meanwhile, the May Day rally by the joint opposition headed by the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna will be held at the Samanala ground in Gaul at 2.30pm under the patronage of former President Mahindra Rajapaksa. The themes is against the tax burden, treachery, treasury bond fraud and selling of national resources. We are ready to hold the May Day rally at this ground with thousands being present tomorrow. It is only a few political parties, including Sri Lanka Podhijana Peramuna, that can celebrate the May Day with a winning attitude. Meanwhile, the JVP will hold their May Day rally at the BRC grounds in Colombo at 3.30 p.m. under the patronage of party leader Anura Kumara Disanayaka tomorrow. It will be held under the theme Social Justice, People's Governance to Build National Unity. We are prepared to hold the largest May Day rally in Colombo, which will be the most disciplined and competitive. There were criticisms of us for not holding the May Day rally on the 1st. We could have held it on the 1st with only a few hundred people present, but to gather 50,000, we have to do it tomorrow. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksha today stressed that the presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumana will be selected through a cumulative decision of the party's members, including himself. He made this remark to media following religious observances in Colombo this morning. 
There will be people coming from all provinces, electorates and divisions. Just like we were able to fill the goal face green, we will have the same crowd at the Samanella ground in goal. Oh, yes, we asked for goal face green, but they did not give us the location this time, which is why we had to come to goal. The real story behind this is that yesterday I heard the president mention Garmini Senarat's name, who was there during our regime. The trial of President Sirisena's chief of staff will be different to that of Senarat's. Senarat was not arrested for bribery or corruption. According to our sources, on the day of the trial, he will be released on bail as he did not misuse state property. Various names have been suggested, but it will all depend on the party's decision as a whole. Janata Vimukti Peramun insists that the public should have no fear as the proposed 20th Amendment to the Constitution will not curtail the President's powers. Speaking at a media briefing today, JVP's Propaganda Secretary, Parliamentarian Vijita Herat added that the Constitution will uphold the unitary status of the country as well as give priority to Buddhism. According to our proposal, the new President will not be appointed by the people. The new president will be appointed by the parliament. Present President Maitripala Sirisena will, uh, is continuing his powers until 8th of January in 2020. And he's the head of the state, therefore he has all powers of national security. We will not change any clauses regarding to 13th Amendment. The present president has many powers according to 13th Amendment same powers will remain to the new president also. He is the person who appoint governors and if the president wants to remove one or uh, more governors from their post, he has powers. And land powers and police powers will remain. More than uh, two or three provincial councils will try to say uh, they are separate state. It can be stopped using 13th Amendment powers. Those powers will remain. You are watching Sri Lanka's award winning news channel, Other Verena 24 7. Welcome back to the news. Minister of Tourism Development uh, John Amaratunga says that the government is aiming to bring in 4 billion US dollars in foreign exchange, earning by attracting 2.5 million tourists this year. He added that more should be done to attract tourists into the country, and Sri Lanka's best bet is the Chinese market. He made this remark at a media briefing held in Colombo recently. In January, we had an input of 24,275 Chinese coming to Sri Lanka. In February, we have 35,929 Chinese tourists coming to Sri Lanka. In March, we had 23,101 Chinese tourists who visited Sri Lanka. Now, that is not enough. Comparatively, that is nothing. So, therefore, we have to make an extra effort to bring in more tourists from the Chinese to come to Sri Lanka. Because we find that out of the countries around the world, China is the best bet for Sri Lanka because these Chinese people, they love to come here and enjoy our environment and our tourist attractions. At the end of the year, we are thinking this year we could have a minimum of 2.5 million tourists visiting Sri Lanka. With that, our foreign exchange earnings should go up to over $4 billion. I am not satisfied so far with what we have been getting. We could be able to do better. Stock market analysts say that the political uncertainty prevailing in the country is expected to affect turnover and volume in the market, coupled with slow market activity over the course of the week. 
During the week, the All-Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 lost 0.37% and 0.54% respectively, while recording an average daily turnover of 495 million rupees. The overall market has uh, remained sluggish uh, during the last week and hasn't really picked up after the festive season. The uncertain environment on the political front is likely to be the closest reason while the rupee also dipped into an all-time low. They have had a major impact on the uncertainty that is uh, there in the environment. Uh, though we believe that this uncertainty will uh, slowly uh, fade off, it is uh, likely to still affect the upcoming week in terms of activity and volumes. Uh, as as the uncertainty uh, fades off, we expect some uh, renewed buying interest to get created in the market. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dharana 24-7. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has warned that the United States will face historic regret if President Donald Trump scraps the nuclear agreement with his country. The deadline for a U.S. decision on whether to pull out from the nuclear agreement is due on the 12th of May. In remarks carried live on Iranian state television yesterday, President Hassan Rouhani warned that if America leaves the nuclear deal, Iran had a plan to counter and confront any decision U.S. President Donald Trump may take. Iran insists its nuclear program is entirely peaceful and says it considers the deal non-renegotiable. Last week, Israel revealed secret nuclear files which it said showed Iran had run a secret nuclear weapons program which was reportedly mothballed 15 years ago. Iran branded Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu a liar and said the documents he produced were a rehash of old allegations already dealt with by the International Atomic Energy Agency, the UN's nuclear watchdog. However, after Netanyahu spoke, Trump repeated his criticism of the deal, suggesting he backed the Israeli leader's remarks. Under the 2015 nuclear deal struck by Iran and six major powers, Britain, China, France, Germany, Russia and the United States, Tehran agreed to limit its nuclear program in return for relief from US and other economic sanctions. Trump gave Britain, France and Germany a May 12 deadline to fix what he views as the deal's flaws or he will reimpose US sanctions. While political relation between Iran and U.S. is on the edge, President Donald Trump is seemingly seeking to restore stained relations between China. During a roundtable meeting yesterday, Trump expressed his respect for Chinese President Xi Jinping and his country, while emphasizing that U.S. needs to rework trade with China. President of the United States Donald Trump traveled to Cleveland, Ohio yesterday, where he took part in a roundtable discussion on with countries' prominent economists. We did a thing called tariffs, and we did it on steel and aluminum, and we're doing a lot of other things. My group just got back from China. We're going to have to rework trade with China because that's been a one-way street for decades, and we just can't have it happen. We have a lot of respect for President Xi, and we have a lot of respect for China, but can't go on that way, and uh, that'll all work out. On the 8th of March, President Trump signed controversial orders imposing heavy tariffs on steel and aluminium imports to the U.S. Accordingly, tariffs of 25% were placed on steel and 10% on aluminium imported into the U.S. The move affected relations with China as it is one of the biggest steel and aluminium manufacturers in the world. In response to the highly publicized trade war, China later imposed tariffs on dozens of products imported from the U.S. India dominated the last day of the South Asian Junior Athletics Championship that was held at the Sugudadasa Stadium in Colombo with a total of 20 golds, 22 silvers and 8 bronze medals going their way. Sri Lanka currently stands second with 12 golds, 10 silver medals and 1 bronze medal. The day started well for Sri Lankans as Dilishi Kumar Singha won the gold medal in women's 800 metres with a timing of 2 minutes and 7 seconds, setting a new national record. 
Pasindu Kodikara, who clocked 52.35 seconds in the men's 400-metre hurdles, was able to set another championship record, while Amasha de Silva too clinched gold in the women's 200 metres with a timing of 24.7 seconds. In the meantime, Sri Lanka won gold in the 4x400 men's and women's relays, with championship records set in both events. Shalla Fernando is at the other Derna Weather Centre with your forecast first evening edition. A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Your temperatures for tomorrow are to vary between 21 and 33 degrees Celsius with the highest temperature recorded in Mullaitivu. Well, when looking at the map, a low pressure zone is set to develop along the coastal belt from Mana to Gaul over the next 24 hours. Well, not much sun recorded in the island as many areas of the country, including Jaffna, Mana, Vaunia and Radhapura, Kandy, Colombo, Gaul and Matara as well as Hambantuta will experience showers with thunder showers also expected. That's all we have from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your City by City forecast. And before we go, we'd like to take you to China's Sichuan province, where over 18 million lights created a colourful fantasy world for visitors to experience during Labour Day holiday from Sunday to Tuesday. The light show included 14 themes, including a 26-meter time tunnel and a fantasy ocean that presented a visual feast to the visitors. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Varana, 24-7.